Hello YouTube, Hillman here. I hope you guys had a great week. I apologize for the wind noise. It's pretty breezy today and it is a hot sun buck out here. <laughs> but uh, that's the way it is here in Texas in August. It was about 90 degrees, about 9 o'clock. So yeah, typical August for us. I hope you guys had a great week. Uh, a little programming note, if you will. Uh, Today is Friday. This video will be going up, and next Friday there will be an SPU going up. And normally I do my uh, skeletal piper updates, my Friday updates on Friday. But uh, this Friday, next Friday, and then the following at that, those will be uploaded and made on Saturday because the company that I work for is going back to a five-day work week. Uh, we've been doing four day work weeks for about four years and uh, there I can't do anything about it and there's no reason to get wound up about it and so you just move on and you adapt. I'm very blessed and very lucky to have a very good job that provides for my family and for all the hobbies that I have and so I am very blessed for that and I am certainly not going to complain. Uh, hours are going to be 7.30 to 4, still get off early enough in the afternoon, get to sleep in a little bit. So working on Friday doesn't bother me a bit, and I save a little vacation time. So, good, bad, that's the way it goes. But, SPUs will continue. I'll just be doing them on Saturday instead of Friday. Okay? Okay. <laughs> uh, I had a uh, subscriber uh asked me a question on a forum who actually uh, subscribes to me here on YouTube, Shaking Horizons. I will put a link down in his channel if you would like to go sub to him. He doesn't have any videos up. I'm going to use this video because I know he's going to watch it. Make some videos, brother. Everybody wants to hear what you have to say. And so uh, Colin is his name. And he wanted me to make a video uh, explaining uh, my pipe routine, my pipe knowledge, if you will. Uh, I'm going to try to keep this brief, but I have a feeling it may go a little bit long. And a lot of this is stuff that you guys that have been smoking a while already know, so you don't even have to watch it if you don't want to. You never know. You, I might do something you don't do, and you might think it's a good idea, but if you're, if you're a long-term pipe smoker, this is all just going to be... Uh, common good common stuff for you so anyway but I did notice that I have not put up a video like this and so I figured hey what the heck I'll go ahead and put it up and uh, whoever watches it watches it and I hope that you find it informative okay so I have been a pipe smoker since 1977 that is 37 years and in 37 years I have acquired a lot of knowledge and a lot of pipes, a lot of tobacco, and uh, a lot of good friends, especially here on YouTube. And so I'm just going to show you some of the things that I do and uh, some of the tricks, if you will. And so let's get to it. Oh, and by the way, this is my new Missouri Meerschaum spindle. This is part of the Great Dane family. I put the uh, short stem in there. This is the unfiltered, which is weird. For a Great Dane, you would think it'd have the filtered uh, stem in it, but it doesn't. It has the unfiltered. So the Pony Express, the Morgan, all those uh, will fit in here, which is kind of a shame. I'd like to have the, uh, the uh, Danish bit to be able to put in here, but uh, I know that Custom Corn Cobs makes stems for these. I'm going to be ordering me one. So... Anyway, just so you know, we're here real quick. I'll show you this. Uh, this is the stem that comes in it. So it looks more like this. I just like the short stem. I think it looks better. But uh, this has a three-quarter inch bowl. This particular one is inch and three-quarters deep. So it actually has a fairly good sized bowl in it. So let's talk about pipe care. 
And so what I do is, is I always, when I'm smoking my pipe, I always have a lot of, well, I say a lot, about three or four uh, pipe cleaners uh, with me when I smoke my pipe, mainly because I'm a slobber monster. I get a lot of uh, condensation down into uh, my pipe, and you can hear it gurgle. So having a pipe cleaner handy, you can just uh, run it down in there real quick, let it sit for a second, pull it out, and the gurgle is gone. And uh, the way that I like to clean my pipes is I don't normally, I'll just use a pipe cleaner to clean them with. I do not, after I smoke it after, and after it cools down, I normally do not run alcohol through there until I start to get an off flavor. Once you smoke a few bowls in there, quite a few bowls in there, you'll start noticing if you have a pipe uh, that you're smoking English is in, for instance and it starts to taste kind of funny, it starts to get bitter, and these are tobaccos you smoke in there that you know are smooth, and you know that you know it's not supposed to taste like that. That's a good indication that you need to clean inside your shank and your stem, and even inside your bowl. And what I use is, is a pipe cleaner soaked in vodka. I use vodka. I do not like using iso uh, isopropyl alcohol. I think that isopropyl alcohol, if you use it too much, that it, the way that it evaporates, and if you use spirits in a bowl and you use it too much, you can actually cause your wood to crack or your cob to crack in the shank or in the bowl. So you want to be careful. That's why I wait until it starts to get a really off flavor and then I will clean it out that way. Now, once my pipe cools down, I'll run a pipe cleaner through the stem a couple of times, you know, just your typical. Then I'll run it in through the shank. Some pipes you can double this up and put it in here, and and sometimes you can't. But what I like to do is, is I like to make a little bitty deal like this, and make a little deal like that and bend it again, and now you have a little crank. And you can crank in there, and that will help clean out <clears throat> around the inside of the shank. And it might even play music for you. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, that's what I do when it cools off. You won't, do not pull the stem out until the pipe is cooled down. And then what I do, this is something I learned from the Dagners. And we know that they are smoking pros. So what I do is take a pipe cleaner like this, double it over, bend it again, make a little crank on it like this go down inside the bowl after I've cleaned it out and gotten all the uh, dottle and everything out. And then we're just going to sit here and we're going to go like this around like this. And it just goes and it takes everything out of the side, cleans out the, all the dottle and helps dry the bottom of the bowl. So you can thank the Dagners for that. Them some smart cookies. <laughs> so anyway, that's really just how I take care of my pipes. I never salt treat a pipe hardly ever unless I get one that goes really bad but normally when I will salt treat is if I buy an estate pipe either off of eBay or somewhere else uh, and it's really caked up I will ream that out and then I will give it a salt treatment especially if it smells bad tastes bad but normally just sanitize an estate pipe use use whatever you're going to use to clean it with alcohol or you know a spirit Clean it off, wipe it out, sanitize it really good. You don't know where that pipe has been, and you don't want cooties. <laughs> and uh, especially somebody else's cooties. I don't mind my wife's cooties. <laughs> so anyway, that's really all I do to it. And then I will put them up. I will leave a, when I get done cleaning it, I will put a pipe cleaner back inside of it and bend it to the side a little bit. Then I will set it upright like this either in a stand or just up. I have a piece of wood that I'll just lean them up against. That way if there is any condensation left it will all go down toward the bowl and the pipe cleaner will soak that right up and it's ready clean and dry and ready for the next time you're ready to smoke. Another thing that I recommend is, is having more than one pipe. If you only have one pipe that is, that is, you know, that is okay. You know, not everybody has a, a million pipes. But I highly recommend, even if it's cobs, if you have a favorite briar, get you a couple of cobs because it's really good to have uh, a pipe for every blend. 
Like I have pipes that I only smoke Englishes in, I have pipes I only smoke aromatics in, and I have pipes that I only smoke vapors in. Now, the majority of the pipes that I smoke uh, are vapors because that's just the blend that I that I like, and the the blend that I the type of blend that I like. Spit it out. <laughs> and we are up to 10 minutes. I have got to kick this into gear. Okay. Storage. Usually you can keep stuff in a tin for a little while, but it will start to dry out and require rehydration, and there's nothing wrong with rehydration at all. Stuff gets dried out. I keep my stuff in uh, that I'm going to long-term store. I keep those in mason jars. You, for, you can buy a pack of eight or so for about $11. Our local supermarket up here actually has a 12-pack for the same price, so I normally buy my jars up there. But what I'd like to do is, the stuff that I'm not taking out of a jar, I have a hutch that's inside right by my back door, and I keep the pipes that I normally smoke during the week, that I have a certain rotation set up. And what we do is, is we eat a lot of this uh, gelato ice cream. I don't know if you call it ice cream, gelato, sherbet, sherbet, ice cream. But uh, these things come in these with a seal top screw on jar and they actually will hold quite a bit. So what I do is I will take stuff out of a jar and uh, put it into a Ziploc bag and then I can put about two of those. I'll put about an ounce in there. That's good to last for a while till I'm ready to put some more in there. Then I'll just fill that bag up, back up. I'll put it in here. I'll seal this tight, stick it in the hutch and it's ready when I'm ready to go. So I will normally put deals that are that are together, like this particular jar right here. I will keep uh, shortcut to mushrooms. Notice this hieroglyphic abbreviation system I have here. This is shortcut to mushrooms, and and uh, also in here I'll keep uh, Black Magic Woman from Just for Him. So I keep aromatics in a jar, a couple in a jar, Englishes a couple in a jar, and then so on and so forth kind of like you do your pipes okay your choice of lighting is yours and however you like it like today it's a little breezy so I'll use a Zippo uh, matches I don't normally use because the wind is always blowing here and so if the wind is not too bad I would normally I will use my uh, Jetline Pipe G lighter I like it a lot because of the soft flame on it a Zippo, when it's breezy like this, yes, it will light, and it is windproof, and man, that flame will just get the whipping, and when you've got hair on your face, uh, it can make uh, for an adventure in lighting. Okay, so let's go on. i got a shortcut to mushrooms. I've got a plate here, and what I like to do is, is have my tobacco dried a little bit. I don't like it, you know, you don't want it goopy, and... If you've got a goopy or really wet tobacco, just put it in a paper plate, set it on the counter, on the table, let it sit for 30 to 45 minutes, and that normally will uh, dry out just, uh, that'll be enough for you to uh, put it into your pipe and smoke it. And you shouldn't have any problems with lights. The main problem with relights is overpacking your pipe. And I'm going to show you how I do it, which is the way that was taught to me by my grandfather it's some sort of kind of if you know what the Frank method is I will put a link to the Frank method down in the box for part one it's a three part video and I'll do that for you as well but this is the way that my grand grandfather showed me and so now I'm going to show you so what I'll do is what I like I'm going to put some of the shortcut to mushrooms here on this uh, paper plate this shortcut to mushrooms is good stuff and it's, I just got this in last week, so it's a little bit moist, but uh, it's almost the consistency that I like. Just put up. I'm going to close it. But here's the way that I like it to be, okay? I like it so that when I squeeze it together, it barely sticks together. You see how that's kind of clumping? See how it clumps? This is almost exactly the way that I like it. I, it causes me not to relight too much, uh, makes it where you can pack it pretty easy, and uh, seems to burn pretty consistent that way.
and that's just the way that that's the way that I do it. So here is the way that I load my pipe. All right, I will take three fingers. I will take like this, and what I will do is I will just loosely fill it into the bowl till it comes up to the top like that, just gravity feeding. And what I will do is I will tap my pipe down like this. And I will just shake all that loose stuff to the bottom. And what that does is that creates an open area around the uh, shank hole so that you can get some good airflow through there. Now what I'll do is, and just so you can see, uh, see if you can see in there, it's just loose. I'll do the same thing. This time I'm pulling, what I'm doing is, is I am pulling tobacco into my fingers like this. And so you can see that I have a pretty good size pack. What I want to do is now is I'm going to place that in there and I'm going to put it in there. And you want to do this over a plate because it can get everywhere if you don't. Okay, you can see how full that is. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my thumbs and I'm just going to run them around just like this. Just pushing it in with my thumb. I'm not using the end of my thumb to drive this down in here. Okay, what I will do is I will push that in until it gets nice and light and then I will check the draw. That's pretty good. So you can see my pipe is full. It's fairly firmly packed, but yet I still have a nice loose draw. So everybody has a different way to light. I like to make a char light. Just enough to light the top, get a little bit of smoke into the mouth, and then I will lightly tamp that down to push a little bit of that flat, that uh, coals down onto the top, and I'm ready to light again. Mm. If you've never tried shortcut to mushrooms, that's some good stuff, Maynard. <laughs> so anyway, that's the way that I do it. As my pipe burns down and it, the smoke starts to get light or it starts to get uh, starts to go away, I will lightly tamp. You want to lightly tamp. Do not over tamp or you will pack your bowl down tight. You'll relight more. And I really think that that's the biggest frustration that people have when they first start smoke, uh, pipe smoking is relights. They think that it's not supposed to happen, but relighting is part of the hobby. Everybody does it. Very rarely will you get the perfect pack where it all burns down and you don't have to relight. And if you start talking to somebody, relights are a guarantee. <laughs> so anyway, guys... I know this has ran a little long. If you've stuck it out with me this long, I really do appreciate you watching. I hope there's something in there that you can find of use. I appreciate you watching. I hope you guys have a blessed week next week as always. And until we share another bowl together, you two, peace.